This is the Khmer Times News. My name is Paolo Bonini, and these are your headlines. Myanmar's crimes only ever increase with new accusations of mass rape, and the US Secretary of State is getting involved in fresh talks. A new expressway is to link Phnom Penh and Siem Reap, and we have a story of a thief that will make you lose your faith in humanity. But first, our headline story. Myanmar, that lunatic neighbour of Asia that is fast becoming a hermit nation due to its military holding its citizens hostage, has exasperated the ASEAN group, who have spent years trying to broker a peace, but have made zero headway. Well, now the US Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, is getting involved in a vain attempt to try and rein in the military thugs that have killed thousands, displaced millions, and locked up countless numbers of innocent people, so their military may rob a nation blind. Blinken will travel to Jakarta for talks with foreign ministers of the ASEAN. At current, Myanmar has been suspended from top-level ASEAN summits due to its failure to implement a peace plan that was agreed over two years ago. There is a chorus of voices saying that Myanmar's leaders should be referred to the International Criminal Court for war crimes and crimes against humanity, including widespread sexual violence. A Myanmar human rights activist has detailed mass rape to the UN Security Council, citing the widespread use of rape and sexual violence by military personnel against the Rohingya people, a people being annihilated by the military junta. Among the many cases documented are incidents where women have been gang raped by soldiers as well as being raped at checkpoints because they are unable to pay bribes. And the abuse is only ever mounting. But the Security Council's ability to take a strong stance on Myanmar has been hampered by both Russia and China, which supply arms to the Myanmar military and have used their veto powers to shield it from international pressure. Both commentators and politicians are appalled that both Russia and China seem to be aiding the junta by acting as its guardians. At current, an estimated 1.5 million people have been internally displaced. 75,000 people have fled to neighbouring countries. More than 23,000 civilians are now arrested. The tragedy in Myanmar is on a biblical scale. And all of its citizens are little more than hostages to this vicious, tyrannical regime. This week, our crime desk is all about kids, and we have two cases that I believe will have you staring at the screen struck dumb. I have reported on hundreds of stories, but this crime story has to be the most pathetic I have ever reported on. It involves a robbery. Quite simply, a person was robbed of gold jewellery early one morning as they were going about their business. So far, so normal, you may feel. But there is a huge difference here. The victim that had her jewellery snatched was far from your average victim. I think, in fact, it's best I show you the victim herself. Here she is on your screen. Yep, that's right. Some bloke robbed a three-year-old girl of her tiny golden earrings. Okay, let me say that again, as my brain is having trouble digesting it. A man who is 21 years old robbed a three-year-old of her gold earrings. His name is Mr. Cheng Shrei, a 21-year-old waiter. 
The three-year-old was at first stunned by the robbery, but then on realising what had happened, she gave chase and tackled the thief to the floor and held him in a headlock until the police arrived. OK, I made that last sentence up about the chase and the headlock, but all the rest is quite unbelievably true. The 21-year-old male has been arrested and will be tried for robbing a three-year-old girl, as well as now becoming a local legend as the biggest moron for many a country mile. Let's stick with the kids being at the centre of criminal injustice with this next story. For a careless driver who is quoted in the press as having a out-of-control vehicle, for which I always replace out-of-control vehicle with the driver was texting when driving and not paying any attention to the road. Well, he was in an accident involving a child, the out-of-control vehicle, texting, smashed into a scavenger's cart and in doing so badly injured a small child. The accident happened at 10pm in the capital. Sources at the scene said that a white Chrysler was seen driving carelessly and at high speeds in an erratic manner. The car hit the scavenger's cart with such force, the young child was thrown from the cart into the road and was very badly injured. At a nearby hospital, the small child had stitches to her head. Now here is the newsworthy bit. After the accident, local authorities arrived and asked both parties to mediate. The mediation ended with the car owner agreeing to pay $60 compensation. Yep, $60. For speeding, driving like his hair was on fire, losing complete control of his vehicle and finally crashing into a small child and sending her to hospital to have her head stitched back together. That is $60 worth. And you thought the gold earring thief was bad. We at the Khmer Times do like to keep a watchful eye on the environment, be it snaring that is killing huge swathes of animals, dolphins being illegally netted, and of course, the never-ending issue of deforestation. This time, a rather unusual twist to the tale. It seems a staggering 50 hectares of flooded forest land in Kampong Chang were stolen. Yes, I actually did say that. Somehow, 500,000 square metres of land was cleared of its trees, and nobody seemed to notice. Well, they did, but it was all rather too late. Criminals in Kompong Chang province continue to destroy forest land, despite authorities' efforts to prevent further criminal activity in that area, as yet again they struck, leaving a vast area stripped bare of all its trees. Mr. Shiak, the director of fisheries administration of Kompong Chang, has led a team to inspect the flooded forest land and to survey the damage. On visiting, officials saw carnage as a huge tract of land now lays barren, as every tree of any value had been felled and carted off. Worthy of note is that rather oddly, no one seems to have noticed the never-ending convoy of trucks that must have been used to carry off half a million square metres of forest. Yes, I did just say half a million square metres. What the Fisheries Administration did find, though, was machinery used to fell the trees and three mottos that had been abandoned by the criminals. The Directories of Fisheries, Mr. Shiak, said that he saw the logging machines in action. But when his team arrived at the scene, 
the culprits had fled, so no arrests were made. Shiat confiscated the three motorcycles left by the suspects and is waiting for detailed information to report to the courts. This, quite simply, does not look good, as the Prime Minister himself has been extremely vocal, saying that this crime must stop, and nobody is immune from prosecution. But sadly, yet again, where there was once an expanse of trees, there is now a huge dusty field, and yet more of the kingdom's ecosystem has been traded for cash. To my own personal amazement, a new road to link Phnom Penh and Siem Rip by a much needed expressway is already taking form as the government has created a task force to examine the Phnom Penh Siem Rip Expressway. Now what this means is just not the ease of being able to travel from one city to the other with greater comfort, but it will be of huge benefit to trade for both cities. But for the average Joe like me, the biggest benefit by far is it will be much safer as the current single lane road is as dangerous as they come. For taxis and trucks storm up and down it like they've been shot out of a cannon. Many are the accidents, many do they die. I myself personally have stood on that very road and I watched a child of 14 die at my very feet. And you know what? And this is the truth. I was not shocked, for I have seen so many near misses on that road, seeing that child die. All I was really seeing was the inevitable. It just had to happen. The government has formed a task force to implement a Phnom Penh Siem Rip Expressway. A spokesman of the Ministry of Transport has told us at the Khmer Times. The current framework agreement is to lead to a detailed study on the PPSR Poi Pet Expressway project. The first phase is 260 kilometres from Phnom Penh to Siem Rip, and in the second phase, a further 150 kilometres from Siem Rip province to Poi Pet, totaling 400 kilometres. Now here is where the financial juices start to flow. Just one kilometre of road costs an incredible $10 million. And you will think, holy cow, $10 million for a single kilometre? That's an awful lot, isn't it? Well, roads like this are unbelievably expensive. When you are building them from scratch, even just to resurface a road now costs a king's ransom. But building one from scratch, that's going to cost you an awful lot. One must consider the terrain. There's an incredible amount of waterlogged rice fields to traverse. And that is a problem that the mighty builders of the ancient Khmer Empire also had to wrestle with. But there is a big difference. For those ancient builders, the heaviest things on their roads were elephants. But now we have trucks that weigh more than a whale. And they travel at speeds that would leave the ancients speechless. It's time to have a look ahead and see what the weather has in store for us next week. So here is a weather chart and what you can see is there's no rain, isn't it lovely? Just puffy clouds and sunshine. Actually, that's a lie. It's a complete lie. Let's go to the real chart. Oh dear, it's all gone a bit strange, hasn't it? Have a look at that. There's rain every single day. There's the potential for thunderstorms coming up next weekend. The temperature's in the 30s. And if all this isn't enough, we have had flooding in the capital and the government is issuing warnings that there will be severe weather in some areas.
This has been the Khmer Times News. Please do subscribe and comment and stay up to date with all the breaking news by following us on both Facebook and Telegram. This has been Paolo Bonini and that was the week that was. I'll see you next weekend for your weekly roundup.